passion, flair, exuberance, thundering bats, and a dose of panache. Those words describe what players from the Dominican Republic have brought to Major League Baseball. The island known as the Pearl of the Antilles has produced some of the greatest players in the majors. The rich legacy started in 1956 with Ozzy Virgil, viewed almost as the Jackie Robinson of the island and paving the way for Soto. Got a breaking ball, it's high in the air to right. Look at it fly! Vlad Jr. endeavors to thrive in 2022. In this video, we discuss the 10 best Dominican players to ever play in the MLB. Before we begin, we recognize the notable omissions from this list, including the electrifying leadoff hitters in Julio Franco and Jose Reyes, as well as powerful sluggers in Pedro Guerrero, Alfonso Soriano, and Moise Alou. Also, the brilliant and entertaining pitcher in Bartolo Colon. Number 10, Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz hails from Las Matas de Santa Cruz, Dominican Republic. Cruz earned the nickname Boomstick after homering in five consecutive games in 2015. Cruz represented the DR at the World Baseball Classic three times. Nelson Cruz well hit to left. That one's got a chance. And was on the winning team in 2013. Cruz is a seven-time All-Star, four-time Silver Slugger winner, and was named the MVP of the 2011 American League Championship Series for the Rangers after hitting six home runs and recording 13 RBI, both major league records for a single postseason series. Whoa! Cruz had his best season in 2014 with the Baltimore Orioles when he finished with an MLB leading 40 home runs, a 271 batting average, 32 doubles, and 108 RBI. Overall, he hit 459 home runs and 1,302 RBI. Yes, Nelson Cruz is one of the greatest underrated sluggers in MLB history. Number 9. Robinson Cano Cano was born in San Pedro de Macorís, Dominican Republic, and grew up on the island before migrating stateside. Cano was remembered as the second baseman who helped lead the Yankees to a World Series championship in 2009 and the Dominican Republic to the World Baseball Classic title in 2013. He was named captain of the Dominican Republic team in 2017. Cano has an accomplished career as a five-time Silver Slugger, All-Star MVP, and two-time Gold Glove winner. However, the only blemish in his career is a PED suspension that cost him 80 games because otherwise, we would be talking about the Hall of Fame. In 2019, Cano became the 101st player in MLB history to record 2,500 career hits and only the third active player to do so joining Albert Pujols and Miguel Cabrera at the time. Cano also hit 335 home runs and 1,306 RBI and is one of six Dominican players to reach the 2,500 hit mark in the majors. He's also the third player to reach 2,500 career hits after making his debut with the Yankees. The other two, Derek Jeter and Lou Gehrig. Yes, Cano is in some serious company and has accomplished a lot in his career. Number 8, Adrian Beltre. Beltre was born in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Beltre can be considered a late bloomer because when he debuted for the Dodgers at age 19, he was an average hitter over the first six seasons. Beltre erupted in 2004, crushing 48 homers to lead the major leagues while batting 334 and finishing runner-up to Barry Bonds in the NL MVP vote. However, he flourished as a Texas Ranger player because in 2011, Beltre homered three times in Game 4 of the 2011 ALDS against the Rays to send Texas on to the ALCS and eventually the World Series. It's a high drive to left field. Back goes Desmond Jennings onto the track at the wall. That it was there where Beltre homered in Games 5 and 6 against the Cardinals. Beltre perhaps cemented his Hall of Fame candidacy on July 30th, 2017, when he doubled for his 3,000th career hit. Beltre was a four-time All-Star, four-time Silver Slugger winner, and a stellar defender with five gold gloves. One funny nugget about Adrian was that he didn't like anyone to touch his hair, and Victor Martinez and Elvis Andrews made it their mission to defy the order, almost leading to fights. Turns out, Beltre got the nickname El Coja after a bald TV detective when he was growing up and was hair challenged as a child. Who knew? Beltre was a dynamite batter and teammate as long as you didn't touch his hair. Number 7. Sammy Sosa Sammy Sosa lived the rag-to-riches story growing up in San Pedro de Macorís. Sosa became one of the most famous men in two countries, 
America, and the Dominican Republic when he battled Mark McGuire for the single season home run record in 1998. It became a summer sensation because both men passed Roger Maris's long-standing record of 61 home runs, with McGuire smacking 70. to Sosa's 66. Deep left field, and can you say 66? However, it was Sosa who took home the NL MVP award that year after helping lead the Cubs to a postseason berth. Sosa picked up where he left off by crushing 63 more dingers in 1999 and 64 in 2001, making him the only player in history with three 60 homer seasons. He became the fifth player to hit 600 home runs during his final season with the Rangers in 07. A seven-time All-Star, Sosa holds numerous Cubs records, but he may never get to Cooperstown because of PED rumors, even though he denied using performance-enhancing drugs during his career. However, Slamming Sammy is part of baseball history and a rep for the Dominican Republic. Number 6. Vladimir Guerrero Guerrero was raised in Don Gregorio, Dominican Republic, in a house made of mud and brick and a palm leaf roof. After Hurricane David ravaged the country in 1979, Guerrero and his brothers played baseball using makeshift gloves, assembled from mill cartons and socks filled with plastic bags as baseballs. Guerrero did not own a real baseball glove until he was 15 years old. Guerrero became a household name in 1998 when he hit 324, belted 38 homers, and 109 RBI for the Montreal Expos. He gained even more notoriety for his incredible throwing arm in right field. In his younger years, he was fast because in 2002, he swiped 40 bases and came a home run short of joining the exclusive 40-40 club. Guerrero won the AL Most Valuable Player Award with 39 homers, 126 RBI, and a league leading 124 runs. Guerrero hit 449 homers overall and has a well-earned reputation for swinging and everything. The man hit pitches that bounced up off the dirt because as a kid, he played a game called La Plaquita, similar to cricket. Now that explains it right, makes perfect sense. Number five, Manny Ramirez. Ramirez was born in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, and moved to the Washington Heights neighborhood of New York City with his parents when he turned 13 years old. Ramirez struck fear into opposing pitchers anytime he came up in an RBI situation. He crushed 21 grand slams in his career, making him the only player in history with at least 500 homers, a 400 career on base percentage, and 20 grand slams. Ramirez was a run producing machine, driving in 100 more runs in 12 seasons. In 2004, Ramirez claimed World Series MVP honors after hitting 412 across the Red Sox four-game sweep of the Cardinals and helping the Red Sox win their first title in 86 years. He later went on to win another title in 2007. Left field and the Red Sox are winners! Ramirez's career was scarred because he was suspended twice for PEDs in 2003 and 2009. However, he possessed one of the best batting eyes of his generation and was clutch with 20 postseason home runs, which is an MLB record. Fun fact, Manny being Manny. Manny Ramirez at the plate was a serious, deadly hitter, but outside of that, the man was one of the coolest and funniest people in baseball. A cool moment was in a May 2008 game at Baltimore. Manny managed to track down a deep fly by Kevin Millar with a spectacular catch. Without breaking stride, Manny ran up the wall, high-fived a Red Sox fan, and fired the ball into Dustin Pedroia, who relayed it to Kevin Euclid to double off Aubrey Huff. Wow. The funny moments include a 2004 play where he snagged the ball from Johnny Daming heading to a cutoff man, thereby allowing David Newhand to get it inside the park home run. Also, in the 2005 game, Manny decided to take a leak in the Green Monster bathroom during a mound visit. He emerged from the monster just in time to have Joey Gathright drop a single right in front of him and allowed the Rays to score. Manny being Manny, right? Number 4. Juan Marichal Juan Marichal is a native of Laguna Verde in the Dominican Republic. Juan developed the reputation as one of the most intimidating pitchers of all time. With an unusual leg kick and angles, he was anything but conventional. He was a starting pitcher for the San Francisco Giants from 1960 to 1973 the Boston Red Sox in 1974, and the Los Angeles Dodgers in 1975. 
Marshall won 161 games, which is more games than any other player in 1960, and won 243 games overall while posting a career ERA of 2.89. His distinguished career also included a no-hitter. The longtime Giant star was the winning pitcher in one of the greatest games ever pitched when he and fellow Hall of Famer Warren Spahn were locked in a scoreless duel for 15 innings in 1963. Marshall was a 10-time All-Star. He was the first Dominican player to be voted into the Hall of Fame on his third attempt. The man was special. Number 3. David Ortiz Affectionately called Big Poppy, David Ortiz is perhaps the greatest designated hitter of all time after hitting 541 home runs in his big league career. Ortiz hails from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Ortiz played for only two franchises in the majors, the Twins between 1997 to 2002, and became a superstar for the Boston Red Sox between 2003 and 2016. Ortiz was the man you wanted at the plate with a game on the line and produced clutch hit after hit, just ask the Yankees. Ortiz produced clutch hits in the 2004 ALCS hitting a walk-off two-run home run in Game 4 and a walk-off single in Game 5, and later won ALCS MVP to erase the 3-0 deficit. In three years, he hit 7-14, 5 for 7 in the ALDS, and 3-33 in the 2007 World Series. In 2013, Poppy became iconic for being the voice of the Red Sox by lifting the city of Boston following the Boston Marathon tragedy. He had his iconic moment in the ALCS against the Tigers when he had a game-tying grand slam off reliever Joaquin Benoit in the bottom of the eighth inning, helping propel the Red Sox to victory. Hard hit into right, back at the wall, Tiger! Later in that postseason, he won World Series MVP to cement his legacy. In 2022, David Ortiz was inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame on his first ballot. Iconic. Number 2. Pedro Martinez Martinez grew up in the Dominican Republic in the Santo Domingo suburb of Managuayabo. Despite being undersized by modern standards, Martinez was a power pitcher with nasty off-speed stuff. Martinez regularly left hitters befuddled and were one of the few must-see pitchers in an era dominated by offense. He led the majors in ERA five times and took home three Cy Young awards, including the 1999 season when he won the Triple Crown. El Grande made eight All-Star teams, was the All-Star Game MVP in 1999, and led the league in strikeouts three times. He also won a World Series with the 2004 Red Sox. Pedro Martinez earned over 91% of the Hall of Fame votes in his first year of eligibility because he was one of the best pitchers of his generation. Petey was filthy to face as a hitter. Number 1. Albert Pujols True to his nickname, The Machine, Albert Pujols kept hitting and hitting for his entire career. Interestingly, the Santo Domingo native had to win a position battle in spring training just to make the Cardinals opening day roster in 2001. However, Pujols quickly proved he belonged by belting 37 homers and driving in 130 runs. It led to him unanimously winning the National League Rookie of the Year award. Pujols only got better after that, capturing three NL MVP honors with the Cardinals in 2005, 2008, and 2009, and helping St. Louis to World Series titles in 06 and 2011. Pujols and Hank Aaron are the only sluggers in history with at least 600 doubles, 600 homers, 1,000 walks, and 2,000 RBI. Pujols has over 3,000 hits, 2,100 RBIs, and a lifetime 296 average. At age 42, Pujols is defying father time hitting 16 home runs at this point in 2022 back with the Cardinals and staring down the mammoth milestone of 700 home runs. After he retires, Cooperstown will await on the first ballot for the man known as La Maguina. What do you think about my top 10 list? Who would you take out and put in? Let me know in the comments section. Smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more premium content. Until next time.